Hello, my name is Dr. Mandel, and today I want to talk about a serious topic. Uh, <laughs> when I don't take, talk about a serious topic, sometimes my topics are lighthearted. But today is something I wanted to share with you guys because you probably experienced this type of person in your life, or probably experiencing you right now. I've had people talk about this topic and ask me to elaborate on it, and I just haven't done it. And, um, I just haven't made a video about it. But the topic today is about. Uh, the mind of a narcissist and what exactly is a narcissist. Um, I'm going to read to you this article that I found on Psychology Today and it'll help you determine whether or not that's what you're encountering, the type of personality or person that you're encountering. And I think there will be some like advice at the end of this article on how to handle someone who's like that. Um, I'll give you my advice on it as best as I can as far as from my own personal experience. I've been experiencing that recently, a person like that recent, like currently. <laughs> so um, let's get into it. I'm going to read this article and um, what I can do is share the link for the description, I mean a link for this website in the description below. So it's called Psychology Today. So the name of the article is Understanding the Mind of a Narcissist. So narcissists are not with who they appear to be. They're both easy and hard to love. So here we go. Let me scroll up here or scroll down. <laughs> I hope you're having a good day and you're staying cool wherever you are. It's It's been really hot these days here where I'm at in Ca sunny California. It's, it's California. It gets hot here, <laughs> especially in the locale that I'm at. Um, we've been having 100 degree weather days and stuff. So. Just trying to keep it cool. I'm gonna grab. Speaking of keeping it cool, I'm gonna grab. Grab something to drink. Hold on. Grab my water here. All right. So here's the article. Despite having a seemingly strong personality, narcissists lack a core self. Their self-image and thinking and behavior are other-oriented. In order to stabilize and validate their self-esteem, and fragile, fragmented self. The gods sentenced Narcissus to a life without human love. He fell in love with his own reflection in pool of water and died hungering for its response. Like Narcissus, Narcissus only love themselves as reflected in the eyes of others. It's a common misconception that they love themselves. They may actually dislike themselves immensely. Their inflated self-flattery, perfectionism, and arrogance are merely covers for the self-loathing they don't admit. I can see that if you're experiencing someone like that in your life right now. So, so where was I? Instead, it's projected outward in their disdain for and criticism of others. They're too afraid to look at themselves because they believe the truth would be devastating. Emotionally, they may be dead inside. <laughs> Oh man, that's pretty rough, huh? And hungry to be filled and validated by others. Sadly, they're unable to appreciate the love they do get, and they alienate those who give it. Yeah, that's true. Here's the diagnosis. When we think of narcissists, we usually picture someone with an inflated ego, someone bossy and arrogant, who has to be right. To be diagnosed with Narcissistic Personality Disorder, or NPD, the person must exhibit grandiose grandiosity, if only in fantasy, and lack of empathy, as exhibited by at least five of the following traits. So here's the five following traits of a narcissist. One, has a grandiose sense of self-importance and exaggerates achievements and talents. Two, dreams of unlimited power, success, brilliance, beauty, or ideal love. Yep. Three, believes he or she is special and unique and can only be understood by or should associate with other special high status people or institutions. Four, requires excessive admiration. And five, no, this is not the last one, five, unreasonable ex unreasonably expects special favorable treatment or compliance with his or her wishes. Yep, let's keep going. Six, exploits and takes advantage of others to achieve personal ends. Seven, lacks empathy for feelings and needs of others. Eight, envies others or believes they're envious of him or her. Yep. Nine, has arrogant behaviors or attitudes. 
In addition to the grandiose exhibitionist narcissist described above, James Masterson ident identified closet narcissists, those with a deflated, inadequate self-perception, a sense of depression and inner emptiness. They are also referred to as introverted narcissists. They may appear shy, humble, or anxious because their emotional investment is in the idealized other, which is indirectly gratifying. Hmm. Interesting. I never heard of like closet narcissists. That's a new term. And then there's malignant narcissists. Are they're the most pernicious and hostile type, enacting antisocial behavior. They can be cruel and vindictive when they feel threatened or don't get the, what they want. Yeah, I've met more than one of those people in my life. So early beginnings. It's hard to empathize with narcissists, but they didn't choose to be that way. Their natural development was arrested, <clears throat> often due to faulty early parenting. Some believe the cause lies in extreme closeness with an indulgent mother. Others attribute it to parental harshness or criticalness. Although more research is required, twin studies reveal a 64% correlation of narcissistic behaviors suggesting a genetic component. Psychoanalyst Heinz Kohut observed that his narcissistic clients suffered from profound alienation, emptiness, powerlessness, and lack of meaning. Beneath the narcissist, narcissistic facade, they lack the sufficient internal structures to maintain cohesiveness, stability, and a positive self-image to provide a stable identity. Narcissists are uncertain of the boundaries between themselves and others and facilitate between disassociated states of self-inflation and inferiority. The self-divided self by shame is made up of the superior acting grandiose self and the inferior devalued self. When the devalued self is the inferior position, shame manifests by idealizing others. When the, I, the individual is in the superior position, defending against shame, the grandiose self aligns with the inner critic and devalues others through projection. Both this devaluation and idealization are commensurate with the severity of shame and the associated depression. Some more water. I'm getting tongue tied and it's hot in here. Mm. Although most people fluctuate in these positions, exhibitionistic and closet narcissists are more or less static in their respective superior and inferior positions, irrespective of reality, making them pathological. Arrogance and contempt, envy, withdrawal, denial, and repression unconscious, aggression and rage, projection, blaming or accusing others of their own flaws or actions, yeah. Self-pity, especially closet narcissists and avoidance, i.e. addictive behaviors, are common defenses to, sh to shame. So, narcissists also defend against shame and fragmentation by feeling special through idealiz idealizing or identifying with special or important people. So a relationship with a narcissist, let's, you can hear what it would be like if you're in a relationship with someone like this. At home, narcissists are totally different than their public persona. They may privately denigrate the person they were just entertaining. After an initial romance, they expect appreciation of their specialness and specific responses through demands and criticisms in order to manage their internal environment and protect against their high sensitivity to humiliation and shame. Relationships revolve around them and they experience their mates as extensions of themselves. Many narcissists are perfectionists. Nothing that others do is right or appreciated. Their partners are expected to meet their endless needs for admiration, service, love, or purchases and are dismissed when they don't. That their spouse is ill or in pain is inconsequential. Narcissists don't like to hear no and often expect others to know their needs without having to ask. They manipulate to get their way and punish or make partners feel guilty or turning them down for turning them down. Yes, indeed they do. Trying to please a narcissist is thankless, like trying to fill a bottomless pit. <laughs> 
true, true. They manage to find fault with your efforts or give back handed comments, compliments, so that you always feel one down. If they're momentarily pleased, they're soon disparaging or asking for more from you. They make their partners experience what it was like having had a cold, invasive, or unavailable narcissistic parent. <clears throat> Anne Rice's vampire, <laughs> I'm bringing in Anne Rice. Anne Rice's vampire Lestat <laughs> has such an emotionally empty mother who devoted, devotedly, devotedly bonded with him to survive. The deprivation of real nurturing and a lack of boundaries make narcissists dependent on others to feed their insatiable need for validation. Yep. <clears throat> Partners often doubt the narcissist's sincerity and question whether it's really manipulation, pretense, or a manufactured as if personality. They feel tense and drained from unpredictable tantrums, attacks, false accusations, criticisms, and unjustified indignation about small or imaginary slights. These partners also like boundaries and absorb whatever is said about them as truth. In vain attempts to win approval and stay connected, they sacrifice their needs and walk on eggshells, fearful of displeasing, displeasing the narcissist. They daily risk blame and punishment, love being withheld or rupture in the relationship. They worry what their spouses will think or do and become as preoccupied with the narcissist as they are with themselves. Yeah, that's sad. <clears throat> Partners have to fit into the narcissist's cold world and get used to living with emotional abandonment. Soon they begin to doubt themselves and lose confidence and self-worth. Communication or communicating their disappointment gets twisted and it's met with defensive blame or further put downs. The narcissist can dish it out, but not take it. Oh, yeah. Nevertheless, many partners stay because periodically the charm, excitement, and loving gestures that first enchanted them return, especially when the narcissist feels threatened that a breakup is imminent. When two narcissists get together, they fight over whose needs come first, blame and push each other away, yet are miserable needing each other. <laughs> wow. Often in these relationships, narcissists often in these relationships, narcissists are the distancers when more than sex is anticipating. Getting emotionally close means giving up power and control. The thought of being dependent is abhorrent. It not only limits their options and makes them feel weak, but also exposes them to rejection and feelings of shame, which they keep from consciousness at all costs. Their anxious partners pursue them unconsciously replaying emotional abandonment from their past. Underneath, they both feel unlovable. So yeah, that pretty much wraps up narcissists in a, in a nutshell. And I totally agree with a lot of what they're saying in there. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily genetic. Um, I do feel like it has to do with abandonment issues. Um, a lot of people have been abandoned as children and weren't really raised as children by both of their parents, shown the love and appreciation that they should have as a child should be, you know, growing up, should be in a loving household where, um, you know, you show, show how proud you are of your child and, and their achievements. But a lot of people don't receive that kind of um, love and affection from their parents growing up ever so i could see how that would happen where they get really mad and become really jaded and just really focus in just on the ego on their self and you know just doing things to gratify themselves their ego despite you know the people in their way just you know stepping on people in their way and feeling like they're more important than whoever it is they're dealing with um they're simple they're similar to gaslighters they're similar to uh psychic vampires they have similar uh, personality traits, as I've learned. And if you're interested, you can look at my past video that I, where I did a video about gaslighters or gaslighting, and also about psychic vampires. Um, some might think that uh, narcissists, all these people, psychic vampires and, and um, gaslighters, that they're unconscious of what they're doing, and so they can't help it. I'm under the belief that they are conscious of what they're doing. At a certain point in your life, 
you know, you start to like really be aware of what you're doing and do it consciously, knowing the effect that's going to happen and knowing the, um, I guess what you would, con what a narcissist would consider as a reward for the certain behavior that they bestow upon you. Um, I've had that experience and you can look at my past video where I talk about gaslighting where I experienced that recently. And I experienced some extreme narcissistic behavior yesterday when I had a confrontation with someone where I had to speak my mind and speak up because if I didn't, I'm just talked right over all the time. And finally, I couldn't take any more of it and just spoke up and spoke my mind and told this person how I felt and how I couldn't really talk to that person or feel sorry for that person or feel compassion for that person when I share my personal story and they just dump on it and say, oh, you know, we've all, you know, just kind of dismissed it without getting into actual words that have been said. Just dismissed it. I was trying to get to know this person and um, trying to have compassion for this person, caring and understanding because they have a rocky, <clears throat> a rocky childhood. And I have too. And you guys know that because you've seen the past videos on this channel. And on my, uh, the Productive Cannabis Kind of Sewer channel. So um, I've talked about things that have happened in the past that were very traumatizing and can be very damaging to the soul. But not everybody has to turn into this type of person just because you didn't have uh, parents that loved you and cared about you or if you were abused severely. There's a way to get, to get healed from that. So you don't like turn into someone that's like that where you feel like you always have to be the center of attention and you don't give anybody else a chance to communicate and put forth their knowledge and feeling like only what you have to contribute is important and that what the other person has to contribute is insignificant. That is shown in the behavior where someone, if you're talking about something then they just run right over you and don't let you finish what you're trying to say. Um, you could blame that on the fast pace of today's uh, society, how everything's go, go, go. <clears throat> but there's a certain thing, a certain term called kindness and, re two terms, kindness and respect. You know, give kindness and respect for each and every one of the beings on this planet because everybody deserves to bring forth what they want to bring forth, their knowledge, as long as it's done in a respectful way and not a hurtful way and not a like just nonchalant or just careless way like you don't give a fuck about something um yeah i i had a very big outbreak yesterday where i had to raise my voice and i usually don't you notice that on my videos my voice isn't loud but yesterday i did i raised my voice because i had my voice wasn't being heard i just kept getting talked over and so i i raised my voice and what happened sure enough i was just being seen as someone who's attacking someone seen as like the the angry black bitch you know the whole nine you know ghetto or whatever but the thing is with me if i'm calm and mellow and i talk in this manner to someone who is just being rude and talking over me i don't get taught i don't get heard my voice and my opinion doesn't get put forth and what is the point in trying to communicate with somebody when it's only a one-way street so it's got to be a two-way street for me at least and it should be for you too. You shouldn't let anybody just talk all over you, you know? If that's the case, then you just can't be trying to communicate with someone like that. It's impossible. It's totally impossible. And when this person is continuously bringing forth the fact that they were abused, when, when, you know, and all this kind of stuff, I was abused too. And I'm not belittling anyone's experience, but my experience has been belittled way too much from this person. And that's when I just raised my voice up. I had to, because otherwise I would just be keep on getting treated like I'm some dumb black bitch that doesn't know anything, you know, that uh, has crazy hair, wears makeup, you know what I mean? And, you know, doesn't have a nine to five job. You know what I mean? So you get to stick up for yourself and you got to use your voice. I mean, a lot of people like my voice because it's like nice and mellow. But when I get, when I assert myself, to some people it's very scary. 
And I'm going to tell you something. Yesterday, I sorted myself so much to the point where after it was done, I went in my room. I laid down and went to sleep because it was exhausting. It was a fucking hot ass day. And I just didn't. I just had to let it out. I couldn't just keep holding shit in. I was trying to get my message across every time to communicate, but I couldn't with the voice I'm using right now. It wasn't effective. But when I did raise my voice, it was very effective. And the message was put through very, very clearly. So thanks for joining me today. I hope this helped you a lot in any way if you're dealing with someone like this. Um, some may say, oh, they're not aware of what they're doing. And this person, I feel like, is aware of what they're doing. Because after all that happened, all that was said and done, um, the person was still trying to talk over me. But they couldn't, hardly. You know, and then they accused me of attacking them. And it's like, you've attacked me ever since I, I, I met you, saying negative things to me, trying to bring me down, you know. Just a whole slew of things are said to me. And I try to talk over it. I mean, talk and get my message across, but I couldn't. Because, you know, this person's just going. And try to blame it on some other, some conditions like, you know, ADHD or OCD. I've met people with the, both of those conditions and they've never treated me like that. They've never talked over me and they've never disrespected me. So we can't use that as an exp as an excuse. I just, I do feel like there's a, there's a lot of racism going on in there. Seriously. The person I'm dealing with is someone that is of Caucasian descent, white European, and that I feel like that's a part of it too. They look at me and they just have this summary of what I'm about, that I don't have a worry in the world. And I do, I have a lot of stuff that I have to take care of. And just because I'm not in the nine to five world doesn't mean that I'm insignificant to this world. And that's how this person was trying to make me feel, like I'm insignificant to this world. So don't ever let anybody make you feel like you're insignificant to this world by talking over you and disrespecting you and trying to like gaslight you with your, your spouse and all this kind of stuff and, and getting your, your, trying to get your son involved and all this kind of bullshit. I'm just done. I had it. Yesterday was the last draw and I just rose my voice up. My voice went up high. Not high, but my voice went up. The volume of it went up really, really loud. And I had to do that. And I don't feel bad about it. I don't feel guilty at all because I had to make my point. And here's my suggestion. If you're in a situation where you're dealing with anybody with that type of personality trait, you can do what I did. Get your point across, raise your voice, get your point across, and then avoid that person as much as you can. And that's what I'm gonna do because it's just energy draining for me to be around somebody that's just talking nonstop and not letting you get your point through. I'm done with that. I'm done with being around people like that. I shouldn't have to be around people like that that just don't care, give a shit about me and wanna be the star of the show all the time. Nobody needs to be the star of the show. Let's reciprocate you know, our messages back and forth, you know, and not feel like we're competing. We have to compete with each other. That's the problem with a lot of people on this planet. They're constantly trying to, to be better than the next person. And I don't think that was originally how this planet was supposed to be with the people, with the people walking around on it, but it's turned into one of those kind of worlds. You know, I'm being seen as being uh, self-absorbed because I wear makeup and I do my nails and all this bullshit. That has nothing to do with being a narcissist, a gaslighter, or a um, or any of these other, you know, self self-absorbed conditions that exist. You know, I'm tired of people using excuses about their past. I've had a fucked up past too, and that hasn't made me into that type of a person. So there's no excuse. You know, you just have to take that time and really listen to the people that you supposedly care about instead of just like telling them what to do and thinking you can like rule their world. It's it's really fucked up way to live and you can choose not to be around someone like that all the time. 
and not feel guilty about it because I know a lot of people feel guilty about it. Don't feel guilty about it. Empower yourself. Be strong and stick to what you know is true. And what, what I know is true is that when you're in a conversation with someone, it should be reciprocated. It shouldn't just be a one-way street. So otherwise, you'd be just looking at a lecture on TV. You know what I mean? <laughs> Nothing wrong with lectures, but I mean, when you're talking and trying to get to know somebody and possibly become somebody's friend, um, that's not going to work. That kind of behavior is not going to work. And that does not cut it with me. You know, I've had too many people disrespect me in my life. And I won't have that. I won't play that. So um, I'm going to wrap up this video because it's really hot. But thank you for joining me today. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. Thank you for the likes and shares. And thank you for your kind comments. You can leave your comments down below. And let me know if you're experiencing a personality like this. And you can share what you've done, your tactics and what you've used in order to empower yourself. You know, I don't go around yelling at everybody. I'm not a mean person. But if someone just disrespects me, then I will assert myself, raise my voice. Because that's the only way that I get heard. If my voice is like this, nobody's going to really take me seriously. But if I raise my voice, they will. And it has happened more than once, more than twice. So, <laughs> so yeah, thanks for joining me. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can donate, donate a dollar or more to my PayPal at kdaddytmom at comcast.net and include a question you'd like to see on an upcoming show answered. And I'll include a little research along with it. And um, it's not a requirement to donate to my PayPal in order to watch the videos on this channel. It's just because people have been asking how they can support all of my channels, which is this channel, the Dark Moon Doll channel, uh, the Productive Cannabis Connoisseur channel, and the Healing with Color channel here on YouTube. So that's a way you can support that channel. The money goes towards me keeping the lights on in here, helping with pay the rent, because this rent's way more expensive here, um, and bills are, <laughs> and saving up to get land so that I can grow all the produce and, and everything I want, um, and also build tree homes and yurts, and possibly help other people out in that way. So thank you so much for joining me, everyone. Um, brightest blessings to y'all, and I'll see you soon.